Howdy bubs and welcome back. Today in Game Maker I'm going to be showing off how to create a weapon pickup item that allows the player to perform a limited one-time attack. Here we're going to be able to pick up the item, uh, select a key so that way the item will launch from the player and it'll create this effect. Let's go ahead and jump into the code to see how to do this. Starting off, I have created two new sprites. SPR special underscore item. I just created the star. Doesn't look the best, but you get the idea. I've also created another sprite called SPR explosion. SPR explosion goes at one frame per second. And just does this. After you've created these two sprites, we can go ahead and get started on the first object. Our first object is obj underscore special item. You can call this whatever you want, I'm just following this. In our create event, after we've attached our sprites, we have two variables set up. Picked up and fired. Both of these are set to false. Picked up will trigger whenever the player has picked up the item by colliding with it and fired will be triggered whenever the player presses the appropriate key to launch the item. In our collision event for our pickup, uh, if we collide with the player object, if we have not been picked up, then we will now be set to be picked up and set this to true. This is kept track of and used in our step event. If we have been picked up, and the player has not fired us, then the player uh, positioning will update and tell our object, the special item, where it should be. As long as you have the origin point at the center of the player sprite, then this, if you also have the origin point at the center, will match up. This is how in my game, the star is centered on top of our player. I also make sure the angle aligns with the player's angle so that way it's looking in the correct direction. Remember, uh, the angles are all based off of the right side being zero. If you orient this the other way, then you'll be offset by 90 degrees. So make sure you orient the front of whatever item as always being facing towards the right. So this handles its normal movement. In this case, I have T being the key that we press to trigger the launch. I have uh, fire be set to true, so that way it stops following this portion of code, it actually stops following all of this because it has now been fired. I have two alarms. Uh, alarm zero implements the blast wave, and alarm one implements destroying the star itself. I then have the star launch off at 10 pixels per step and the direction match the image angle so that way it goes the correct direction. And let's look at alarm one, the simpler one. Alarm one has us after 150 steps destroy itself, so the star vanishes. Alarm zero, the blast wave, this will create for us that uh, blast wave that radiates out from the star. So, similar to how we did the enemy boss uh, special attack, I have it here. We will create a new explosion object on the projectiles layer. Uh, the speed will be 5 pixels per step. The direction will be whatever we're matched with here. Image angle will be the direction. And then I have the alarm 0 set to 45. This will destroy itself. We'll look at all of this whenever we go over to the OBJ explosion. I also make sure that the star speed is set to zero so it stops moving. And then we have alarm zero, this actual alarm, be set to five. So every five steps, it will trigger this alarm again. And so another blast wave radiates out. Looking at our explosion down here, we simply have our create event where our image angle is randomly set between 0 and 360. Our image index is randomly between 0 and the total number of images that we have. And so if we look back at our sprite for the explosion, we see it starts off here and then progressively diminishes. It will first pick a random angle to rotate this and then 
it will pick randomly between all of these different frames which one to select. Going back to the explosion, if we look at our step event, I simply have it rotate the little cloud. So every step it rotates 15 degrees. Alarm zero simply tells us to destroy ourselves in the previous uh, OBJ special item. I, whenever it is created, I also specify we only have 45 frames or steps until we destroy ourselves. Then I have my two code checks uh, for collisions. If we collide with the enemy, we just destroy the enemy. Flat out, doesn't deal damage, just destroys the enemy. I also check to damage the player. You don't need this component added. I just decided that if the player is within the blast radius, they should also receive some damage. And so I simply damage them by 0 0.01. It's up to you. You can change this number. I did some testing. This one seemed the best uh, for my case. Now that we have all of this implemented, we are able to, uh, in my case, I simply threw the special item inside the room to test it. You are welcome to do the same just to confirm that your object is working correctly. I press T, it fires off and it does this radial damage. I get close, I receive some damage as well. So it appears to be working. But how do we actually get this to be in the game normally? So let me go ahead and remove our item from the room and let's go look at the enemy boss. In my case, I want this special uh, item to only occur whenever the enemy boss is destroyed. So over in our events, uh, we previously have kept the old code that we inherited from the enemy. I'm going to actually want to copy and use some of this. So I'm going to do control A to select everything, control C to copy it and I'm going to override the event. We're actually going to keep everything except for this one line of code. Rather than creating an OBJ drop, which will create uh, one of the other items and run that's code, I'm going to instead just, just say OBJ underscore special item. So now whenever I destroy a boss, we will get the special item dropped rather than anything else. So now here fighting the enemy, after we defeat the enemy boss, we should be able to get the star. And there we go. And then now I can test out its effectiveness, and there we go. So that's actually all we need to do, and this serves as the final video for our series. If you have any questions or need any assistance in class, just let me know. Otherwise, that's all I have for now. Everyone, have a good one. I just wanted to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, shout out to my bad bubs, my top five, my day ones, y'all have always been there for me. Next up, my baby bubs, the next five, I always love y'all's support. And finally, for everyone else, any little bit helps, thank you to all my basic bubs for supporting me along my journey. If you want to continue receiving notifications, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell button.